What's up? My name is Chris Smith, and this is a walkthrough of how to build an admin panel for your MySQL database in just 10 minutes. Yeah, I said it. 10 minutes. To start from the home screen, choose the Resources tab and click the Create New button and select your database type. Today we're working with MySQL and I've already added my Google Cloud MySQL database. If you're starting from scratch, you'll need to configure your own and you can find more information on that at the link in the description below. So once your resource is set up, go back to the home screen and choose Create New and we're gonna generate the app from data. And this will give us a really simple place to start uh, where we'll already have a query generated for reading in data and searching it from a specific table. So let's go ahead and give it a name. We'll call this MySQL Admin Panel. And that takes us into the Retool Canvas. So we can test out the functionality by typing in some portion of an email and see that it's searching that data in real time from the database. So next let's go up to the edit button and then we can choose to open the right hand panel, the bottom panel, and the left panel so we can start exploring the app and adding to it. Let's do some cleanup first by deleting these two helper containers. And we'll delete this button that we won't need And now let's have a look around. Uh, we can see that the uh, query is showing in the bottom panel and if I select the table, I can see in the top right there's uh, curly braces referencing query1.data. And on the lower left I can see query1 and on the bottom I can see the pre-templated query which will return the values which match the search criteria in the input field. And applying some logic for the search bar to function correctly. If you have any questions about this, feel free to drop them in the comments and I'll try and answer them there or work them into the next video. So next let's add a text component and we'll give our app a title and then we'll do some formatting. We'll just add some markdown to change the size of this title bar. And let's do some formatting and figure out how to make this look a little bit better. Okay, looking good. So next, let's change the name of our query one to something a little bit more intelligible. And let's name it list rows. And we know that we need three more queries, one for creating a new row, one for editing a row, and one for deleting a row. So let's give this one a name. And next, we will change the mode to the GUI mode, which will allow us to more quickly configure this kind of query without writing the low-level SQL. So we'll select our table, this one's the My Users table for me, and we'll choose the right action type, which will be updating an existing record. And that gets us in a good spot to clone these next two. We will create the new row query, and the next one will be for deleting a row. So for new row, we'll just change the action type to insert a record. And we'll change the action type for the delete row to delete a record. So let's set up our first query and the simplest one to start with will be deleting a row. So what we need to do is add an action button to our table which will allow us to call this delete row query. So I'll just select the table here and scroll down to the actions, create a new action, add it to the right hand side and let's give it a name. We'll call it delete record and we'll link that to the delete row query. And to do this, we will set the filter by criteria to look up by a couple different items to make sure we're getting the right record. And we'll reference the table.data.id 
and we'll pass in the i variable to grab the specific row that we're working with. And this will be something that when you add an action button, an i variable will pass through to this query, which will specify the specific rows index. And we'll finish populating this for the name and the email values. And when we hover over these fields, we can see they're green and the, the value of the actual reference shows underneath of them. So the last thing we want to do is when a record is deleted successfully, we want to call the list rows query again so that we're updating the table with the most recent values from the database. And when this query runs, at the bottom of the bottom panel, you can see the actual query that was passed through to the SQL database. So next, let's add a new row by going to the table and choosing the table edit queries on row add. And we will link this to our new row query. And you'll see that when we chose that, it added a plus button to the bottom of the table. And in order to add new rows directly in the bottom of the table, each of the columns needs to be set to make editable. And now when we click the add new row button at the bottom of the table, we can type values in for each of these columns. And we need to reference these values for the new row in our new row query. So we'll add the individual column names. And to reference the values, let's zoom out for one second. If you open the left hand panel and select the table, you can see that there's a new row property and each of the columns shows up here and you can reference those in your queries. Similarly, for editing a row, the record updates property is an array of the changes for each of the individual rows. So for our insert record action, we'll reference the table.new row properties for each of the correct columns. And we will add a success trigger to list rows so that after we add a new row, the table's updated again. And let's search to see if the new row was added. All right, looking good. So we've got creating, reading, and deleting operations done. So let's finish up the last one for editing and updating a row. We'll start by editing a row so we have some record populated in our record updates property so that we can reference it in our query. So we'll select the edit row query and map in the values for the updated row. And this time we want to reference the record updates property. We're just going to reference the first updated record. However, you could set this to handle multiple records being updated at the same time. It's a little bit more complex and I'll eventually do another video on it, but you can find details on that on our docs. And next we'll set the lookup criteria using the filter by and we'll reference the current selected row and the specific ID, email, and name for that row. So now let's save this and similarly as the other queries, set the on success trigger to call list rows and update the table. So we click save changes on the table and we would expect the edit row query to have executed, but I forgot to map that into the table. So let's go do that. So I select the table and scroll down to the table edit queries and choose the edit row query so that when a row is edited, it will call this query. And we can see that that's successfully run now. So let's do some final testing. We'll edit a row, save those changes and see it's updated. 
Next, let's add a new row. And save the changes. And we see that that's successful. So finally, we will delete a row. And let's just go to the next page. And uh, let's say delete this test person record. And we see that that was successful as well. And so now we have completed our basic SQL admin panel. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this was helpful for you. Let me know if you have any other questions in the comments below uh, or bring them over to the Retool forums at community.retool.com and I'll see you next time.